Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Rachel, holistic dentist from Brisbane, Australia. I want to talk to you about xylitol. Xylitol has been very much in the news recently following a couple of studies that have stated that xylitol increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. Well, I'm going to talk to you about that and I'm also going to talk to you about how we recommend you to use xylitol and why we do that. So I will start with the strategic approach for how you use xylitol, what it is and why we recommend it. And then I will go on to talk about the study because uh, if you've come across that, you might be worried that using xylitol is going to cause you a, a heart attack. And I want to kind of expose what's going on with that study and how the information has been put forward to you. So I will be referring to my notes. Okay, so xylitol. It's a naturally occurring sugar alcohol. It's a very good alternative to traditional sweeteners and sugars, particularly when it comes to not spiking your insulin and also for your oral health, because unlike sugar, xylitol doesn't cause tooth decay. It can actually help prevent tooth decay. I'm gonna provide you some practical guidelines for how to use it as part of your oral hygiene regime. How does it work? Well, unlike conventional sugar, it doesn't serve as a food substance for the oral bacteria that cause dental decay. They do eat it, but unfortunately for them, it messes up their metabolism. They can then not absorb and ingest any nutrients and those bacteria die. The other thing xylitol does is it stops the plaque bacteria being able to stick together and then bond onto your teeth so easily. It reduces the formation of plaque biofilm and it also stimulates saliva flow and saliva helps to neutralize harmful acids and it facilitates the clearance, you know, washes away food from around your teeth and mouth. And those combined effects significantly decrease the risk for tooth decay. So how are you going to maximize the benefits of xylitol? Well, there's a daily dosage. Studies suggest a cumulative daily intake of five grams of xylitol that will give you the optimal benefit for oral health. So how do you use it? Well, you have to have a frequency of use. You're not going to just take the five grams all in one go. The timing of its use is quite important. So you want to be using xylitol mints or gum after you've eaten. So you eat, I would encourage you to rinse your mouth with a little bit of water or have a drink of water and then suck on a xylitol mint or chew on some gum for about two to three minutes. So you wanna do that after you eat and after you've had snacks, you want it in there for two to three minutes. You wanna allow the xylitol mints to dissolve slowly in your mouth and ensure that it has prolonged contact with your teeth. So many dental professionals advocate for a strive for five strategy and this is to use xylitol five times a day either through a combination of gum or mints as the delivery method. So you want to make sure when you select your gums or mints that xylitol is listed as the primary ingredient which means it's the most abundant thing in the product. While your xylitol will offer significant benefits, it's not going to replace brushing and flossing. Sorry, you still have to brush and floss. That is essential for good oral health. Just be careful. If you take a lot of xylitol, it can have a laxative effect. You may get some diarrhea and be trotting off to the toilet, um, particularly if you're new to using xylitol products. So you might want to just start gradually and maybe go, all right, well, I've had something that's quite sugary and that's the thing that's going to cause the most damage to my teeth. So I'll have one xylitol there and maybe just have another one later in the day and build up your levels to striving for five. You can use xylitol uh, quite strategically within your oral hygiene regime and you can help remineralize teeth and I will link to some videos on that for you. And now I'm gonna get into the xylitol study. So of course I have to talk about this because many of you have commented about it. I'm having people ask me about it. What's the issue? Well, there was a study fairly recently that 
said, oh, if you have xylitol, it's going to increase your risk for heart disease. But is that true? How did they study this? What quantities were used and so forth? We, I've just said, and the dental profession recognises it, that xylitol is very beneficial to help with your dental health. And, you know, this study that's come out, I think it was from, hang on, let me just read my notes, the Cleveland Clinic, it's caused people who are using xylitol to have a bit of a panic and that's due to a misrepresentation of the results and so that the headlines read you know as they do it's quite scaremongery and oh my god you're gonna die if you take this stuff uh, is it clickbait probably you know the headlines read that xylitol could be associated with an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes and that sounds pretty scary the research has suggested that xylitol and other sweeteners of that type should be investigated further. I agree. But the problem is the study itself, the design of the study and the amount of xylitol that was ingested and the method of ingestion because it's nothing like the way we would recommend that you use xylitol. I've just explained. You use xylitol as a mint or a gum two to three minutes up to five times a day after you've eaten so you're getting one gram spread out during the day you're not ingesting a massive quantity all in one go now those headlines you know the stop the press xylitol blah 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 why what has what has the scientific community and the dental profession perhaps got to gain by saying we don't want xylitol and it doesn't surprise me the timing of this because dentists like myself and Dr. Ellie Phillips and others, uh, Mark Bren, you know, asked the dentist, are coming out and saying how good xylitol is to reduce your risk for tooth decay and to reverse early cavities. So you don't have to have as many fillings and don't have to have as much dental treatment. Surely that is the goal of any health practitioner is to prevent our patients from having health problems. So. You might have been reading about xylitol. You might have watched one of my videos. You might have come across Dr. Ellie's protocol and gone, I'm going to try this. And then you've gone on your search engine, blah, xylitol, and up comes this headline, and now you're frightened. You know, the publications, they run these stories. They like to get people to look at their journals because then what happens is they get more research dollars. Call me a bit skeptical maybe but there you go it helps with their advertising revenue for the journals but i'm going to share some details about the study anyway i'll stop <laughs> i'll stop banging up okay researchers observed that blood platelets were more likely to clot when people who drank xylitol sweetened beverages than those compared to those who didn't you know so they're saying this group over here drank glucose and this group over here we gave them xylitol the glucose group oh no trouble with their blood clotting oh let's not talk about insulin resistance guys let's not cover that no 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 we'll push that to one side but look at this group this group who had the xylitol <gasps> we found that their blood was more likely to clot well let's pull this study apart shall we firstly there were only 10 10 people in this study it's not a lot is it now to base your findings on 10 mm. they were fasted for 12 hours that means they had nothing to eat then they were given a liquid drink that they drank in one go Guess how much xylitol was in that liquid drink? Would you think it would be five grams? Considering that is what we recommend as the dental profession for you to eradicate, prevent and reduce your risk for tooth decay. No, they didn't give them five grams. They didn't give them 10 grams. They gave them 30, 30 grams of xylitol, six times the recommended dosage. Now, that's not the way people consume xylitol. That's a dose that's the equivalent of 60 
mints containing xylitol. 30 to 60 mints of xylitol. Are we recommending our patients ingest between 30 and 60 xylitol mints a day? No, we're not. We're saying five. So we're also not saying to consume your five grams of xylitol all at the same time. So let's put this in perspective. This study is completely flawed. It has no relevance on what happens in everyday situations. Now, personally, I'm going to keep using my xylitol for improving dental health and I'm going to keep recommending it five to six grams of xylitol a day over a 24 hour period. So you could imagine if you sat down and you consumed between 30 and 60 of these mints on an empty stomach, that that's a ridiculous dose. Could that dose be poisonous? Probably. You know, even water, you know, you need water to live. If you don't drink water, you die. If you consume too much water, it actually becomes toxic. There was that story some years ago of a woman who was running, I think it was the Boston Marathon, and she consumed too much water, and she was hyponeutropenic, which means she diluted all her electrolytes and minerals. And, you know, because of that, nobody suggested that you should stop drinking water. No, they said you should have the right amount. Don't overdo it. Don't underdo it. Nobody said, oh, we need to investigate water. Somebody did something stupid and they had too much water while they were running a marathon and it made them ill. We now have to panic, investigate water. Big headlines, water kills marathon runners. No, <laughs> but this is what they're doing to xylitol. Xylitol is a naturally occurring substance. Our body makes some of it, I believe. It's in fruits, it's in vegetables, it's in uh, strawberries, pumpkin, uh, cauliflower. You know, so we're consuming it. It's not killing us, but we've got to do these studies based on facts and on real life. And I'm going to say that xylitol is a great way to reduce your tooth decay. Uh, it's a great way to prevent cavities and a great way to remineralize teeth. And I think you should check out this video to find out more about it.